ACC basketball is being brought to you by RBC Centura, by Sitco, by Ford, by Aquafina, and by Chick-fil-A. Ready to start the second half. Back and forth the game went. Seven ties, nine lead changes. No team led by more than four points in the first half to evenly match clubs. The number three seed and number six seed. I think 36. Big difference to him. Maryland played very well defensively in that first half, and they limited Justin Gray. Third leading score to six points. Inside they go to Williams. Can't convert. Jamar Smith against Williams. Turnaround. Can't get the roll. McCray. Turnaround. Yes. Sharps by two. Paul looks every time he comes up, doesn't he? He challenges that middle. Make sure they get back defensively. Levy's shot is blocked. Garrison comes up with it. Crowd wanted a walk. There was none. That's why it's most important transition that the bigs for Maryland get back to build that wall. Foul called on Paul. During the last break, Scott had a chance to talk to Gary Williams. Okay, we're with Coach Williams. Gary, what did you say to your club in the, in, the, in the locker room tied up? I told him I was proud of their effort. You know, we can do some things better, but um, Wake Forest is really a good basketball team. You know, top 14, 15 team, and we're playing hard, and that's what it takes if we're going to win this game. John Gilchrist didn't get to play as much as I know you would have liked in the first half. I know you're looking for big things. Yeah, the good thing is he only had two fouls, so we have him for three fouls this half. I'm very confident in John's ability to turn it up now. Okay, thanks, Coach. All right, that's Gary Williams. Let's... Williams blocks Smith's turnaround shot. Here comes Paul. Dan Luce with the rebound, knocked out by McCray. That's one of the first good looks that Justin Gray has had in this game. And I thought, I think Gary Williams should have been proud of his team. I mean, he's got a right to feel good about his ball club and the way they've been playing. Eighteen forty-five to play in the game. Trying to tie or take the lead. Wake Forest, Dan Luce on Garrison. Good defense. Shot clock at 20. Here's Gray. He'll knock it down if he has a look, and he does. Just to use a little shoulder fake to buy him some room to come back to his left. 39-38 Wake. How about that drop by Kaner Medley? Yeah, Danilus really having problems with Medley off the dribble. Paul has his shot blocked, and Levy's there. Just a great knack for the basketball. Jamal Levy makes him an excellent re offensive rebounder. Three and a half offensive rebounders a game in these ACC. Gilchrist has a look beyond the arc and hits it. Well, John should be well rested. Only 10 minutes in that first half. Gray running one-hander. Gets the roll, or does he? No. It was up there seemingly forever. Terps have numbers. Kaner Medley now behind his back. Out to Garrison. Paul again. Paul is fouled. Chris Paul pushes it and makes you play defense in a quick transition. Tim, let's see. In, it happened in the Florida State game and here both teams playing better offensively in the second half. That's a nice dribble. It's, it's tough for a left-hander to go right and then come back with that hand right into the defense. But, you know, I think it takes teams, especially younger teams, a, a half to get into the ACC tournament mode. The intensity is much better, much higher. Uh, I think it takes you a while to settle down. We should see some better offensive productivity in the second half. Well, the big story there is John Kilchrist picked up his third personal, so he has to go back out of the ball game. And Strawberry comes in for Maryland. That is not good news. I mean, we saw that stretch for the first half of life without John Gar or Gilchrist on the floor for Maryland. They had a, a struggle to execute offensively, especially in the half court. It's not the same team offensively when he's not in there, and Jamar Smith is fouled. 
I believe that foul is on Eric Williams. Tim Brandt, Mike Jaminski courtside, Bobby Kremens, Mike Hogwood up upstairs. Scott Przewinski Prz uh, uh, the doing the interviews Jones. for us. So we're, he's Jones. a member of the tribe, and I have trouble with his name, <laughs> so I'll let you off the hook on that. You see, guys. <laughs> Williams picks up his third personal. But the key one, just remember, Krzyzewski. <laughs> That's the one you gotta get See, right. I was doing well with that. There's Wonski. I said it right all night and I stumbled once. You're killing me. Never get Coach K wrong. <laughs> Call a foul on McCray. Let's see second half if the opportunity presents that Maryland turns up the pressure they felt like against their half and full court trap that Wake Forest had difficulty against it. There Paul is in a bad way right there. McRae oh. almost gets a hand on it. That's what drives me crazy. You see a lot of contact and then you get a touch foul called. I think uh, Mike would feel like both players were making a play for the basketball. Oh, I agree. I, I definitely agree. I mean, it's just strange to see that. Levy down to Williams, and he banks it in with a good move over top of Smith. Fofana is getting up off the bench, and he has had the most success with battling Eric Williams. Two sumo wrestlers going at it down low when those two are in the game. Smith can't get it to drop. Chris Paul missing the jump shot but making that play one of the best thieves in the league. Just under three steals per game. You can see why the quick hands. 47 44 Wake. McCray knocks down a big three from way outside. I think the hitting's catching up to the pitching. Paul is starting to turn it up a notch. The bucket's good. McCray's fouled him. He'll go to the line for one. Three fouls now on McCray. You know, just so smart, keeping the live dribble, looking for opportunities to get into the lane. Without John Gilchrist on the floor, it is, I don't know that Maryland has anybody man up right now who can stay with him. Maybe, maybe Strawberry, but that's a tough cover for him. Paul's an outstanding free throw shooter, 83 percent. Wake Forest 50, Maryland 47, 15 38 to play in the game. Terps need some more of these. Right now, Wake Forest is turning it on. Back inside the Greensboro Coliseum, 23,000 fans seeing another close ball game, but this one's not played like the first couple. This one doesn't have a rhythm to it. A lot of turnovers, bobbling, but finally getting the job done. But you like that with, with Chris Paul. As soon as he missed that shot, right now he's in defensive mode. How am I going to help my team defensively? He picks up the steal, takes advantage of Chris McRae, and then you get possession. What do you do? Look up ahead. See what's in, on the floor ahead of you, and uh, Eric Williams gets the dunk. John Gilchrist has got mugged over there, no call, and now he's hurt. Levin's hurt. Levin. Mike Bridge is calling that timeout to check on John Gilchrist. He's he says, would you get popped? <laughs> John says, you got it. And here we go, 50-47, Wake Forest leads, 15-30 to play. Gainer Medley. Go, 
Closed captioning for ACC basketball provided by RBC Centura, building a better bank one customer at a time. Foul was on Levy. That's his second. So Nick Kaner Medley goes to the line. Wake Forest lost sight of Medley that time in that flex cut. He was able to come across the baseline and get good open position. Kaner Medley three for three at the line today. Left-hander, very athletic, very active. Really also had to learn how to play coming in here from Maine. Didn't uh, play against great competition. Six foot eight, 233 pounds, sophomore from Portland, knocks it down. Portland, Maine, as Mike said. So it's a one-point game again. The strawberry on ball. Kenny Abekwe knocks it out. He's the last one to touch it. It'll be Wake Forest basketball. And that's where Abekwe is at his best. When he can come in as that second defender, Strawberry did a nice job of standing Paul up, and that allowed Abekwe to come in and get the block. Shot, man. Shot clock at seven. Gray has to shoot on a run and knocks it down. He's had to manufacture a lot of his own offense off the dribble. 52-49, Demon Deacons. Very, very talented basketball team, the Deeks. Ranked as high as number four in the country this year. Strawberry will go to the line. And as the free throws mount, that was something that was characteristic of this series, Tim. And Wake Forest in the two games attempted 72 free throws. Maryland, 63. The foul was on Strickland. That's his second. Strawberry gets the roll with a little bit of body language. Trying to make it a one-point game with this one. Gets them both. Which is why, I mean, basically the two games came down to a free throw shooting contest, and you'd have to give the edge to Wake Forest in that situation. Back to Levy. He fires. Defano with the rebound. Still battle for the ball. The Beckway lays it in left-handed. But take your pick. Strickland was fouled, and the, he'll go to the line to shoot two. Strickland trying to make up for the error down the other end. Now, he did a nice job by diving on the floor and coming up with the ball, but he gave it up when he had no outlet, and that allowed Ibekwe to get the layup. Nick Kaner Medley picks up his third personal as Strickland goes to the line. He brings uh, high-energy defense off the bench, Strickland does. He's a 54% free-throw shooter, though. He's been off his offensive game, six and a half points per, but uh, four points total in the last four regular season games coming into this quarterfinal. Makes the first. And for Nick Kater Medley. Kater Medley takes a seat. Gray comes back into the ball game. Tied at 53. Ten ties. Five lead changes. And there is another three. It's just my imagination. There have been some long bombs in this series. No question about it. Far. Gilchrist really makes a difference, though, when he's on the floor for the Turks. So far, last couple of possessions, they've had Visser and Strickland uh, taking shots for Wake Forest, not their big scores. Back to Strickland. Goes right over top of Fofana. Pretty tough finish right there. And 
and Strawberry's foul. I think Strickland bailed him out on that play because, it, you know, the, the ball looked like it had a mind of its own on that possession when it was in Strawberry's hands. He didn't have a clear direction with it. All three on Strickland. Wiggins, number one seed out in the Pac-10, holding on. And if Beckway knocks down a jumper. Gary Williams playing the role of cheerleader, turning around to the Terrapin faithful right behind his bench. Got him on their feet. Here's Gray again. Gilchrist working on him. The fans are coachable. Ball is still loose. Terps have numbers. Out to Gilchrist. And the foul is called on Gray, I believe. Saw the Stanford score. Take a look at the top 25 teams in the nation presented by Meineke Car Care Centers. St. Joseph's, of course, with that loss this week. Mississippi State with the loss in the tournament. Stanford moved back up to one. The whole sway in the tournament out there. <laughs> Still some landmines out there. A lot of ball left to be played in the next two days. No question about it. <laughs> Strawberry knocks down the first one. Dave Dickerson working overtime over there, one of Gary's assistants. You know, many feel that Pitt is worthy of number one seed if they run through the, uh, the Big East tournament, come out of that a winner. Oklahoma State down in the Big 12. Strawberry gets the second one. Maryland's got its largest lead of the night, five points. Largest lead by either team. Nice pass inside the Levy lost it on the way up. Levy lost the ball on the way up, and the Terps get it. Boy, he had come free. Good decision by Maryland that time, especially by, by McCray. I thought he was going to release it, but saw he didn't have numbers. Run the offense. Gilchrist. Ball's loose. Gilchrist has it. Paul comes up with it. And oh, Paul, look at that. Oh, oh, are you kidding me? Chris Paul. Spectacular move, and he's fouled. Oh, the guy is quicker than gossip. And this is like Barry Sanders with the football. Watch the lateral movement here. See it. Broke his ankles. Yeah, that's new tape job there. That's pretty impressive. Oh, my goodness. The thing is, you know, you keep giving ground with the guy and you find you're under the basket. I mean, it's, it's, just, it's just how dangerous he is with the basketball. Converts the three-point play, and it's a two-point game. 11.38 to play. Sixth-seeded Terps trying to pull an upset over number three-seeded Wake Forest. Back inside the Greensboro Coliseum. Let's go over to Scott. Thanks, guys. I'm with Charles and Robin Paul, the parents of Chris Paul, and these guys right from around Winston-Salem. Actually, Charles was an uh, assistant coach at West Forsyth when Chris played there. What's harder for you guys, coaching your son or sitting here watching him play? Sitting here watching. Sitting here watching. How about you, Robin? How's he doing? I'm watching. He's doing good, but I'm just nervous. Just as nervous as could be. Yeah. The whole Paul family is here. If you could say something to Chris right now and bring him over, what would you tell him in this final 11:38 uh, to play? I'd tell him suck it up and keep on playing hard. Play tough defense. Spoken like a true coach and a true father. Both over to you guys. All right, Scott. Thanks so much. Let's get Prosser looking on. Gary Williams working hard. Both coaches working up a pretty good lather here tonight. Side and Smith. Terps by two with the ball. Another turnover for Maryland. Unforced error, too. A lack of concentration. Garrison just did not catch the pass. They put Gilchrist back on Paul. Great brings up. And we'll go the other way. Coming over the back. This is going to be on Strickland. And that's four on Strickland. Thank you. 
Yeah, it's a one and one now. They, that was the seventh team foul. Seventh team foul. 11-08 remaining in the ball game. Maryland shooting free throws the rest of the way. McCray tried to slip to the line. McCray a 79% free throw shooter. Now they're going to put Smith up there, who's just a 43% free throw shooter. That draws a little laughter at the line. 11 on 11 on 9. We need to put 11 on 9 back. Even Gilchrist and Paul get a little laugh out of that as they readjust the clock. They're trying to put another second on it to 11 on 9. Tomorrow 130, don't forget the ACC semifinals. That'll be Duke and Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech eliminated North Carolina, sent them back to Chapel Hill this afternoon. Jared Jack with a big shot with 1.4 seconds left. That was a terrific play at the end. and. Uh, not a very good defensive stance by North Carolina in that side situation. A lot of reaching going on allowed Jack to get that shot at the free throw line. And, uh, Georgia Tech be interesting to see how Duke reacts to that. Uh, of course, Grambling Rec went in and uh, won a game at Cameron Indoor Stadium, snapping a long home court winning streak for Duke. So now the officials are looking at the replay to see exactly how much is left on there. It looks like 11 10. So they settle at 11 9 and split the difference. <laughs> Play on. So McCray is at the line. Go figure. That's what uh, Skip Prosser was just confirming that he was. Uh, Going over, shouldn't Jamar Smith have been shooting that free throw? McCray misses it anyway. There's Paul. Looks at the three. Stares it down and hits it. DJ Strawberry going under the screen that time allowed Chris Paul the open look. I think he's proved himself. You're going to have to come over the top and chase him. Wake leads by one. Gilchrist looks at a three and drills it. You talk about this guard matchup tonight. It is turning into a great battle, although you have to, you know, both of them have to understand there are bigger things involved here than their one on one. Inside they go to Williams, and Williams dunks it. What well, pretty good find. They isolated Williams. There was no weak side help, and they were able to lob right over the top of Smith, who was fronting. Inside. Smith. Garrison. Great pass by Jamar Smith. 17 lead changes tonight. And 11 ties. And McCray fouls him. Well, that's the thing. I mean, McCray is a tall player at 6'5", and he has had struggles. It's his fourth foul. It's a tough job for him to guard either Chris Paul or Justin Gray off the dribble. I mean, they're just too quick. So Nick Kaner Medley comes in, and McCray goes out. Gray, Williams, turnaround jump hook. Jamar Smith starting to come up big for Maryland. Gives away a lot of weight, but he's got 11 points going up against Eric Williams. Here he is. Little jump hook gets away. And that's why they need him in there, Tim. He's the most polished low post player that they have. They need to find some offense. Here's Williams again, down low. Without calling Jamar Smith. Seven team fouls against Maryland. So Williams goes to the line. He's shooting one and one. A nice looking shot right there. There's Mom, Deborah. 
pretty good player herself. Hey, he had 14 points at halftime last Saturday against NC State. So when he gets on, he can hit the shots. Well, again, and when, he, when he plays against a team that he can overmatch physically inside, I mean, he takes advantage of it. But in, in this game, Maryland has had the bodies to throw at him on occasion. Inside again to Smith, and this time Eric Williams picks up the foul. Four on him. Four on Strickland, four on Williams. And if this is if there's been a problem with Williams, it's been the ability to pick up fouls, trying to front in that situation. Skip Prosser wanted Jamar Smith on the line before. He's got him now. And he misses. Garrison. Good strategy right up until the end. I mean, he was daring Jamal Levy to take that jump shot. Levy finally just made up enough room, and then Garrison made the fatal mistake at the end of bailing him out with a reach in foul. So Levy goes to the line. Jamal Levy on the line. Jamal Levy, a 6'9, 180 pound junior from Panama City. This is the first. He's got eight points on the night. Now you, you look at Levy at the free throw line. Does that look like a guy who would be third in the conference in rebounding? No. I mean, you'd never guess that, but 8.5 per and uh, does a solid job on the glass. Now one for three at the line. And it's a two point game. Side to Smith again. Visser on him this time. And Kaner Medley with a big follow. Live body. Paul again has it blocked. Outlet to Garrison. Or correction, Gilchrist. Inside the Smith, it's easy to see what they're trying to do now. They're trying to keep the power game alive. Garrison backs it in. Maryland's biggest lead, 71 to 65. Turks by six. It's the flex offense for Maryland, and they are pounding it inside against the Deeks. Nick Kaner Medley. Bam. John Gilchrist, Chris Paul, Wake Forest, Paul, Gilchrist, Maryland, Paul, Gilchrist. How about this battle, Mike? Well, and it has a freshman guard come in, and uh, maybe since Phil Ford and played that well in his first game, 21 points already for Chris Paul, seven assists as well. He has been sensational, Gilchrist with 13. We talked about that matchup, and it has lived up to expectations. But right now, Maryland is carrying the physical battle to Wake Forest, and that's what's forged this six-point lead. Under eight minutes to play. The final quarter, final game of the Friday. Been a spectacular day in Greensboro. 23,000 here enjoying this one. Pass inside the levy, and he slams it. What a find by Chris Paul. And that's the kind of execution you want coming out of a timeout. 71, 67. Shot clock at 15. Gilchrist beyond the arc. Yes! Paul brings it back. Levy, splash! Oh, are you kidding me? 90s, here we come. Let me tell you, I mean, Jamal Levy only a 25% three-point shooter. He looks solid on that one. 
This foul is going to be called on Gray. That's four on Gray. Well, you got three Deeks now sitting with four personal fouls in Paul, Williams, and Strickland. Chris Paul's got three. Kaner Medley goes to the line. I like this game maybe one at the line. Maryland not a very good free throw shooting team throughout the year, but they have gotten better as the season has gone on. And shooting well enough in this game, Tim, at 67% right now. We've just aligned their shooting in other areas, but they are 50% for the game and 8 of 12 from 3. Kane and Medley hits them both. Terps lead by 5. Timeout on the floor. We'll take one as well. 6.53 to play in Greensboro. Maryland Terrapins holding on to a five-point lead, 6.53 to play in the ball game. A look at our Polaris ATV shot tracker leads you right to Jamal Levy, six of nine. Mike, in the, in the regular season series, averaged a double-double against Maryland, 11 points, 12 rebounds, and he has been solid tonight, six of nine. Well, most of his work inside with the killer three from the top as well. 14 points, seven rebounds on this night for Jamal Levy. And he came into this game, Mike, with a little bit of a mission. I mean, he was scoreless in the uh, loss to NC State last Saturday. He wanted to make a difference here tonight. Mission accomplished. Teron Berry. Came to Medley with another rebound. Garrison, tough jumper, not even close, boy. That's not the shot that Gary Williams wanted, I'll guarantee you that. Ball. And the foul. Gilchrist with his fourth personal foul. That could be the biggest thing that's happened to this ball game yet as you look at the game summary. Our Chrysler game summary looks like this. 11 ties, 17 lead changes. Paul has been phenomenal. 21 points, 9 assists. But Levy, as we showed you, has been the difference maker. And he misses this one. Actually, I think the biggest thing was you bringing me those peanut M&Ms at halftime. That may have been the biggest play of the night. Gave you a little sugar energy, didn't it? <laughs> a little chocolate fix. Get me through this second half. <laughs> Big guy was wearing down. I had to pump him back up. <laughs> Levy makes the second one. 75 71, Terrapins. But Gilchrist is out of the game now. Levy gets the kick, so Maryland will bring it in. And as we saw in the first half, things changed dramatically when he's not in there. Well, and against half court pressure, you know, the, the other Maryland Terrapins can't run and hide from Chris McRae. They've got to give him outlets and understand that this is uh, this is offense by committee right now. It's not going to be one guy running the show. And that's what happens with Gilchrist out. And Paul is unbelievably quick. I don't know how he tracked that ball down, got control of it, and then got it up softly on the rim. What a phenomenal play. Gary Williams wants a timeout. Mike, what do you do with Gilchrist? <laughs> See how long you can afford to live without him. And with plays like this, it's not going to be very long at all. But that's look, what I mean. look at this. I mean, that's that's the decision you have to make as a coach, though. Chris Paul, three red jerseys there, comes up with McCrae fighting him off, then having a shot blocker bearing down on you and somehow getting it up and converting. Our Chick-fil-A nugget of the game. ACC coaches who also played in the league, Gary Williams, Matt Doherty, Bobby Kremens who's here, Jeff Jones, Les Robinson, the old left hand that went to your alma mater, Bucky Waters, who coached at your alma mater but went to state, and Jackie Murdoch. Quite a list there. We're going to have to get uh, Bobby Kremens' tournament resume in here someday, points-wise. I know what he did as a coach. 
Bobby was a player. I think one game he had 51 points. No, I'm just making that up because he's listening. Terps living on the edge without John Gilchrist. Inside to go to Smith. Wow, and that's what they need to do. That is exactly what they need to do. Can't live with jump shots. Keep pounding inside. That's what's worked for them in the second half. Jump hook by Paul. Paul now with 25 points. Turks by two. Here's Smith again. Offense has been astounding in the second half for both teams. Paul tries to answer. Under five minutes to play. Every one of the games today has been a nail biter. Smith goes away from the basket. That's going to drop Gary Williams nuts. He's had all his success down low. Levy, yes! One point game. All right, if you're Gary Williams, you're just watching that clock slowly tick by. He's trying to massage this game down to the last two minutes where he can get Gilchrist back in, who just checked into the game. And sometimes players have to extend out of themselves in certain situations, and Jamal Levy has done it in this game from behind the three-point arc. 18 points to go with seven rebounds. ACC basketball is brought to you in part by BMW, the ultimate driving machine. The ultimate driving machine here tonight has been Chris Paul. Absolutely. And there's been, there's, there's been, uh, it's, it, the, the road has been clear ahead of him the whole night. Tarps leading by one, 419 to go. Maryland will bring the ball in. Chris Paul takes a breather. Goes to get his tank refilled. Kaner Medley. Big time three by Kaner Medley. Answer after answer from both teams. You said if they got above 80, you thought Wake had the advantage. Here we are. Bang. Justin Gray. Kaner Medley. Garrison. And he'll go to the line to shoot two. Eric Williams just fouled out. That's five on the big fella. And that play saved a wild uh, try by Kaner Medley. Goes off the glass right there. Went over Levy's head right to Garrison. So who do you bring in now, Visser? Visser, yeah. And here he comes, Kyle Visser. 6'11", 224-pound freshman from Grand Rapids. The surprise of Wake's rookie class. Played well in the first half when he was in. Visser will come back into the ball game with three points. Yeah, I just don't, I don't think that Danilus gives them enough up front right now. They need Visser's length and rebounding out on the floor. Fisher's trying to get Wake Forest back on the floor. Skip Prosser using that like a timeout. 30 seconds to make that substitution. Garrison at the line for Maryland. Travis Garrison has averaged double figures over the last five games. Knocks the free throw down. He's got another one coming. Boy, if he can come alive, Tim, that'll give them a huge boost going into the postseason as another scoring threat up front to complement Jamar Smith. Hits them both. The lead is three with 3.35 to play. Folks, they're just shooting them from long range and knocking them down. Kaner Medley first.
Gray at the other end. This is special. The band plays on with 3.35 to go. The fourth and final game here this afternoon, and the fans have gotten every penny out of their tickets today. See the timeouts remaining. Maryland with two timeouts, nine fouls. Here's the situation in foul trouble. Gray and Gilchrist with four. Williams is already gone. Gray and Strickland in trouble. Nice pump fake by Gray. Back outside the ball. 15 on the shot clock. 10 on the shot clock at Paul was calling for the ball. Pulls up for a three. Ball's still loose. Smith comes up with it. Back to run that little high or pick and roll situation at the end of the clock, but Maryland able to get good pressure on that jump shot by Paul. Looking for Smith down low to work on Visser. Goes with the left hand, can't get it. Tanner Medley comes up with it. Little bigger target that Jamar Smith has to work over. Kyle Visser, seven feet, long arms. Totally different kind of body. Shot clock at 20. Stepped on the line, it'll be Wake Forest basketball. And Visser got really lucky that time. You have to be careful if you try to buy that call, you better sell it hard because he had Jamar Smith a wide open jump shot. Visser 6'11 plays bigger, Smith just 6'9. He and Williams were about the same in height. So you're right, things change. McCray now comes in for Kaner Medley. Cross are going with the uh, three amigos out on the floor and Downey Gray and Chris Paul. Ball to the basket. Levy comes up with a tough shot. Under two minutes to play. Turf spot three. McCray is fouled. Fouled by Bisser. That's his first. Ryan, what Maryland did there, they, they, they sought out the mismatch inside. McCray had Chris Paul, and they got him the ball on the post. Bisser just a little bit too late coming in to help. Like we said, it would come down to free throw shooting. Here we go. McCray gets the roll. Uh, and if you're if you're Maryland, this is the guy you want there. 79% seventh in the league. So of the four of the five Maryland players out on the floor, he's the most reliable at the free throw line. Maryland extends its lead. 86-81. And the youngest team in the Atlantic Coast Conference has 144 remaining in the ballgame. Downey. Gray frees up and can't hit the three. Forced it a little bit, Mike. Yeah, a couple of tough shots for Wake Forest. Chris Paul gets a hand up in that shot, and uh, Justin Gray having to shoot under duress as well. Those are tough to make in the last minute and a half. Turf spread the floor. Too early. Five-point lead, no, we'll run some clock. And Maryland takes a timeout. 15 seconds on the shot clock, 109 to play in the game. Well, let's take a look at the tournament and how it's unfolding. Virginia beat Clemson in the first round game. And then Virginia gave Duke all he could handle but fell by 10 today. North Carolina led late in the game, but Georgia Tech came back on a Jared Jack shot with 1.4 seconds left to win at 83-82. NC State down Florida State 78-71.
all the top seeds have held forth today, but Maryland right now on top of Wake Forest, and it's getting late. Defense has been astounding for Maryland, and uh, you know, 42% shooting for Wake. And I think more impressively, uh, Maryland's offense has really come here today. Nine of 14 from three, a bit of an aberration for that team. And respectable enough at the free throw line, although let's see how the last minute nine plays out there for the Terrapins. 65 seconds to play. Shot clock is down to seven. Levy steals it. Here come the DD Dickens. Bad turnover for Maryland out of the timeout. Penetration by Downey. Chris Paul. Drills a three. 86 84. 28 points for the freshman, and what a pump fake he utilized to get himself the open three. Here's the look. We talked about it. 28 points for his first ACC tournament action, and he is playing like a senior. Three of seven from downtown, seven of seven from the line. He's gotten penetration into the lane. And when he's not knocking down jump shots, he's helping his teammates out. See him scoring in transition right here. But Tim, he has nine assists to go with those 28 points. Big time game by the freshman Chris Paul. This is certainly the kind of game he played in the win over Duke down in Winston-Salem. He just took over that game in the last five minutes. And these are the Everett Case Award winners as freshmen. Chris Paul obviously off to a great start in this tournament. He will be a candidate for that award. Well, plenty of time right now. Seven, about eight seconds between shot and game clock. And, uh, you know, Wake needs to stop right now. Plenty of time to go back down and tie this thing up. You talked about how big that turnover was. There's no question. Maryland led by five with 65 seconds left. And they turned the ball over, and Paul hit the three. Maryland turns it over again. Wow, two possessions, two huge turnovers. Maryland not doing a good job, Tim, of coming to the basketball and making an outlet available for Garrison. Take another look at this. There's a look. Everybody running away. You've got to be running back to the basketball in that situation. I don't know if he was out, but he certainly was pushed. I don't know. Tough call. Now, the point is that it, Garrison should never have had, he should never have had to made that pass. You know, they, they, everybody just sprinting away. Kaner Medley's got to be coming back toward the baseline. Right foot was on the line before he passed it, but was he pushed? That's the question. No call goes out of, out of bounds for Kaner Medley. Pepsi players of the game, John Gilchrist, 15 points, 5 of 8 from the field, 6 assists, and Chris Paul, 28 points, 9 of 20 from the field, and 9 assists. You know, it's been Paul, and he's been a, a, had a fantastic night, but when this team needs big shots, Justin Gray is usually the one who steps up and takes them. He's had a, a subpar scoring night, 14 points, about 3 below his average, but he's the one who wants the ball in his hands. With a chance to tie or take the lead. 39 seconds left. Levy. Back to Downey. 20 on the shot clock. 25 on the game clock. Ball penetrates again. And he's fouled. And he hurt himself. That's a cramp. Got a cramp in his calf. That's four personals on Smith. Chris Paul will go to the line. Chris Paul for two shots. Everybody on their feet for the finish here. Makes it look easy, doesn't he? 
29 for Paul. Trying to get the 30 points and tie the score. Still being bothered by that cramp. Let's see if it affects the free throw at all. Terps haven't been able to get it in bounds the last two times. Game's tied. That's his career high. They are trying to deny the ball to Gilchrist and doing a good job. They've got to get it across the timeline. 12.9 seconds left. Full timeout for Maryland. For Maryland. How about this day? Well, you know, and, and I'm telling, I bet you, I, I guarantee you that Gary Williams is just telling John Gilchrist now, you can't let yourself be denied the basketball. You have got to come and get it and make a play. Well, we start all over again tomorrow with the semifinals, starting with Georgia Tech and Duke. Winner of this game will move on to play NC State. We're going to sleep here. We're going to bring cots out for us, and we'll just. <laughs> I've got the uh, Legends Brunch tomorrow morning. Have to be here at 9.30. I'm sure you'd like to get up and join me. Absolutely. You're a legend of the ACC. Duke Blue Devils in a tight game with Virginia Cavaliers. They got Ewing there. And the big follow inside. Williams came up big in this game. Ewing came up big. Duke wins by 10. That was the final score. And then Georgia Tech and North Carolina came down to this. 1.4 seconds left. Jared Jack hits the jumper. And Georgia Tech moves on. Terrific day of basketball. Earlier tonight, NC State beat Florida State in a game that went back and forth. 12.9 seconds left in this one, and it's tied at 86. No timeouts for Maryland. They must inbound the ball. To Gilchrist. 10 seconds left in the game. Gilchrist. And he's fouled. With 3.7 seconds left. Well, they're going to let the point guards figure this one out. John Gilchrist coming down. A great spin move inside. Talked about the strength that he possesses. Just a little overmatch for Downey inside. And Gilchrist uh, has a couple to see if he can forge a lead. 71% free throw shooter. Game on the line. Hits the first one. One timeout for Wake Forest, so they've got a chance to set it up. And they'll take the timeout now. So everybody out of timeouts now. Timeout with 3.7 seconds. seconds left. Wake's final timeout. Well, if there was any doubt about Maryland getting to the NCAA tournament, win or lose this game, selection committee will look at this as a great win or a great loss, a good, what they call a good loss. Maryland is definitely in. No, no question about it. Then, and uh, let's take a look at these last 3.7. Normally, I would say that's enough time to get it all the way to the rim, but Chris Paul might be fast enough to do that. I might say in this situation, you might look for a jump shot or a three to win it if, if in fact, Gilchrist goes ahead and makes this shot. Uh, a miss might almost work to their benefit to take a little time off the clock before Maryland can get it up the floor, but, you know, you hate giving away points. Well, the Turks are going to give up the rebound on this. There's no question about that because they want to be back defensively. Strawberry, McCray, and Smith are all behind Gilchrist in a defensive mode. I think if they want to deliver the ball to Chris Paul, they want to do it as far up the court as they can on the run. Gilchrist, second shot, misses it. Ball still loose. No fouls. Turks are going to win. Sets Wake Forest, 87-86. You called it. He made this that second shot on purpose, didn't he? Yeah, it looked like it. I mean, sure put a string on it. And luckily, he hit the rim and went straight down, and that ate up too much clock. Great call, Mike Jaminski. The Terrapins upset the Demon Deacons, 87-86 in a terrific ball game. We'll be back right after this.